Okay, so we're working on a Samsung. Um, there's the model and serial. So we got two problems on this one. First one, as you can see, the defrost drain is completely uh, plugged up. So they had an issue where the fan uh, was inoperable. So what happened is uh, after this thing goes back into cooling mode and this the defrost condensate couldn't drain, um, the fan recirculates it as those moist uh, those droplets recirculate they accumulate right behind the fan where the airflow is they build up there until they get against the back of the fan whenever this thing is put back in place and uh, when that thing's fully in place then it can't um, go through the the fan can't turn at that point so all we had to do to take that out was Obviously, we removed the shelving, and uh, the shelving had to be removed after that. We took uh, this little piece here, had a screw in the top, screw in the bottom. They're going to be the longer screws. Then you had two shorter screws, one here, one here. Those had to come out. In order to access those, we also had to remove the... Uh, bottom shelf which is i've got it there in the floor and uh, there's two things here that have to be pressed one on that side of the filter housing one on this side of the filter housing you just press both of those in simultaneously while picking up on that shelf and then after that loose, you slide the whole shelf out of the refrigerator and that gives you access to the back panel so that's pretty straightforward on that. So the repair here is to clear the defrost drain. So we're going to clear all the ice and everything, clear the defrost drain. Um, in order to check that, to know for sure what was going on, when I came in with a no-cool issue, uh, pulled up my wiring diagram and everything and looked at the circuitry, and I found the, I put it into the uh, diagnostic mode, put it into the uh, compressor run, when you put it in compressor run during diagnostic, it actually runs the fans and the compressor. All fans and the compressor run during that part of the diagnostics. And uh, that's the uh, first thing as soon as you go into diagnostics, I believe that's running. I'll go back in there here in a minute and show how to go into that. So while the fans should be running with the doors closed, uh, the fans should be running during that part of the diagnostic mode. I go to the back and actually just uh, stuck my uh leads of my meter um i back probed for voltage right there cn76 you can see where it calls for the free fresh food fan so that's the orange wire and the gray ground i put uh one lead on the gray one lead on the orange we were looking for voltage because we had it in diagnostics the refrigerator was calling for the fan to be on so at that point voltage should be coming uh, we should get a voltage reading between those two wires, and we did get 11 point something volts. So when I when the fan wasn't on and we were getting voltage, I knew that the control board was good. I figured that probably it was frozen up. It's a pretty common issue on these. If the defrost drain gets clogged, and you get the same scenario that we have. So the fix for this is after everything, typically after everything is... Uh, uh, thawed out and we remove all the ice clear out the defrost drain that part should be working the fans probably going to be okay You usually don't have to replace them uh, There are times when you do at the same time. We're having an issue with the ice maker. Here's a common Samsung Problem with this ice maker. So we're going to go back in the back. You can see That there's a lot of ice build up back in the back that prevents the fan that's actually right in that area to prevent it from running as well once the fan stops turning you see the little um there's a uh thermistor right to the edge of my finger there and uh right behind that thermistor right above that screw right behind that other ice there is uh, a fan in there and so that fan is also obstructed with ice can't turn so we'll fix all that and then the problem these things usually have, if you can see, I'm gonna shine my light through the bottom of this. And when I do look in at the inside, you'll see our light coming right in over there. And uh, we'll move it so at the front it's okay. Let me see if I can do that shot. See where I'm shining my light. 
up under there to see where the so you can see where it begins to shine through and that showing us that we've got an air gap in there customer also said that they were getting some ice build up at the back so once we get the ice maker out we'll remove the auger motor assembly and all that so to remove these ice makers we're going to remove the we will we will remove the uh, auger motor assembly we're going to remove the ice maker we've already removed uh, this cover here so it just goes in place it's got a uh, couple of hooks down here and one hook up here so they just hook into their into their places where they go there so that they just hook in there and then once they're hooked in you've got a uh, the screw that comes out right here we've already taken out that Phillips screw so we've taken that one out we're gonna take this next one here out This is in defrost mode. You always want to put these in defrost mode. Because you actually have one uh, coil of the refrigerant tubing that runs through the bottom. So that's not ready to come just yet. So I'm going to put just a little pressure in between here. Just enough to get that pass that lever, then I'm gonna pull this down. So once that's past that lever, I can go ahead and pull this thing down. Okay. And that's pretty frozen up in there, so we're gonna wanna be easy with it. So there's the there's the refrigerant tubing that you want to be careful with. There's ice built up in there too. So this ice maker is really not ready to come out. I've got a steamer. I'm going to take and clear some of that ice out where everything's loose. We've already, we got to do a little bit of steam work behind the evaporator anyway. So we're going to get on that now. No. So we're working on this now with our steamer here. And get some of this uh, ice out of the way. A steamer is preferable over a heat gun or a hair dryer. You won't hurt the plastic with a steamer. Uh, a lot of times with a, a heat gun, which I have a heat gun in the truck, or a hair dryer, you can really distort that plastic. Okay, so once you get this thing uh, defrosted enough to where you can move it around a little bit, this, there's two keepers up there, and then there's this button here that pushes so these are normally in place like so you want to push that while pulling back on the whole ice maker so you could actually push it like that pull the whole thing back it'll drop down at that point you're bending the tubing down just a little Enough that when you raise it back up, your ice maker clears the tubing. Mine should be clear at this point. And then it's just, it slides out over those coils. So you don't want a lot of resistance on that coil. You want to slide out over it pretty easy. And then remove the ice maker. So then there's another look at the ice blockage in there above the fan. And we'll get another shot of that in a minute. At this point, there's a lever on the bottom there, right there below the auger motor uh, arm. And that thing should go, it should actually go up. And um, so I'm going to take a... Uh, kind of a uh, long screwdriver. Let me zoom back out. So I'm going to take a long screwdriver, slide under that piece. So that's the piece you want to take out. Now a lot of times I'll reach in here with my hand and grab the 
Don't know if y'all will be able to see this. I will grab. Wow. It didn't used to be that far in there. Okay, so we're gonna grab, I'm gonna push my thumb under that, and I've got my fingers around the uh, auger motor arm. So I'm gonna push up on that. And pull out on it. Of course, right now, it's not gonna come. What am I thinking? Because there's a, a lot of ice blocking it. So let's get rid of the ice. So we finally got enough ice out of the way that we can pull ours loose. Um, I'm, I've got the the levers already been pushed. I'm going to reach back there and grab it and just pull this auger all the way out. It may rub the, the frost. It may rub the refrigerant line there just a little. That's okay. We'll lift up on that refrigerant line if necessary coming back in. So I'd lifted it up just a little there to make sure that we're going to clear that tearing something out. There's the fan that gets stopped by the ice. It's right in the top of that auger motor. And uh, we'll set it over here. It's free right now, so we've probably already done good enough on getting the ice out. Up in the bottom of that dome area there, it will build up a lot. you got to really pay special attention to that area. See that piece of ice back in there? That'll have to be taken out. Or you end up stopped back up pretty quick. So I'm gonna turn my camera back around. I want to try to give a shot of that. So that's what you're after. Then, um, so we're gonna check. I said we would check. I'm gonna check up in that upper area of uh, this room. That's that back top corner to see if there's anything showing me any signs of so we don't see anything there actually i don't see a gap on this one until way down the line so the only gap I saw on this one was from the back corner all the way down the side here. And that's what we're going to uh, really be concentrating on. Then there's a Y-clip kit that goes on the top up there. Uh, and I'll attach it and show it in, the, in a few minutes when we put that in. So this part here is ready. I ran my steamer down in the defrost drain hole there. And so... Um, that probe is sticking down in there like it needs to. I'm not going to touch it because the heater's been on. But it's probably pretty hot. So that's all good. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put our cover back on there. And uh, When you go to put your covers back in, you're going to get these little gaps at the side, probably on each side. Normally, all you have to do is after the, like, put the top in and come over here and give these things like a good little head on the side. And they'll pop back in for you. Then the screws should do the rest. So on this one, we'll... Uh, was under the impression nope it's gonna matter on this one. That little bracket goes to the top so that has to go first actually apparently nope that goes first so the top will go in first and uh set in there like so and then these two longer screws one in the bottom one in the top shorter screws one right one left and that should do that got our screws back in got to put our uh, little clip up here goes in the top
that definitely went that way. So we got that in. And uh, that's it on that part. We'll put the shelves in in a few minutes. So what we did, we took 100% silicone and I've already ran it along the edge. All the way on the edge on the outside and I ran it also on the edge down the inside of this and uh, so that ought to seal that pretty good so we're gonna go back in with the auger motor I'll just show this real quick when you go in with the auger motor make sure my refrigerators kick back on so my line starting to frost up so I'm gonna move pretty quick we'll just push that in until it clicks on the bottom same place that we had to lift so that clicked in place we're going to go ahead and pull this up make sure that the wires are tucked behind the little thing here and laying like so the guard will cover those in a minute and we're going to get the ice maker. So on this ice maker, got to have the bottom 